hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review if this is your first time here then welcome i would just like to welcome all my new subscribers thank you guys i'm so happy that you found my channel for everyone who comes back each and every time to hear my reviews i just want to say thank you please do not hesitate to hit that like button because that helps me and please don't hesitate to comment down below let's get into it so tonight we are reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville season two, episode 15 to Martell the truth. Honey, I don't know how much truth Martell telling, but I mean, at the end of the episode, my mouth was completely wide open. Even though these are things that I've already heard or seen on the blogs, on social media, or when him and Mel are acting a fool on Beyonce's internet, it was just so different to actually hear it. Okay, who's child? Okay, let's get into it. So when the episode first opens up, we see um, the pharaohs. They're out there having their little um, talk. So Mel's brother is interjecting himself in something that he has no business in. And he's saying something to Martell that he should not be saying. Now, we can agree to disagree. You guys can comment down below. But I feel like he overstepped his boundaries. He's telling Martell that the kids told him that they wish that he was their father and that they could go home with him because they don't want to go home with their actual dad. To me, I just feel like that was a low blow. And I feel like, quite frankly, you're just trying to say something to hurt him at this point. And the kids are off limits. I mean, you probably was giving them Skittles and ice cream and candy and letting them stay up all night. So, of course, they were like, well, we want to be with you. We want you to be our daddy. They're kids. They're impressionable. Honey, they'll say anything if you give them a bag of M&Ms. So, I mean, I really don't feel like that was anything for you to say. But, child, let's move on. Destiny's sitting there she's saying that the Madani event is a success and that they're all having a good time everybody with the exception of Martell because honey he didn't got his cape and his kids and he gone child so Tisha starts being passive aggressive talking about things she shouldn't talking talking about talking about uh thank you for coming to the mommy and me podcast uh, I thought Destiny and Kimmy were gonna have a problem but they clicked yes they clicked girl everybody is not gonna have a problem with a person but just because you have a problem with them oh my gosh tisha you need to grow up girl it's wearing me thin you really need to grow up so kimmy was like yeah destiny is cool af and then destiny was like i'm always cool af girl i don't know about all that because i ain't really like you in season two pre-covid okay i don't know if the quarantine made you a little bit better or what but i didn't really like you when you were first introduced on the scene so let's just file back with all this you always cool af okay so then Kimmy starts to tell Maurice, well, you know, I had a discussion with Kimmy about what happened Saturday at the event. Okay, well, you don't need to be telling Maurice nothing. It has nothing to do with him. And I'm sure she already relayed the message to him in pillow talk, just like you do with Marceau. So Kimmy was like, why are you telling him? And she was like, oh, I'm just telling him to tell him we're good. No, you're not. You're being messy, just like your mama, honey. The apple does not fall far from the speech impediment tree. Child, y'all just being messy. You being messy just like Miss Wanda. Cut it out. Y'all always get somewhere and then start a big old mess. You need to stop that. So, you know, so then she starts saying, no, so then Destiny says, well, Miss Wanda's not coming, is she? Destiny, you're so messy. See, this is kind of why I don't like you. I mean, I know you were trying to say it to be funny, but at the same time, you were actually trying to get some mess started. So then Marceau was like, well, no, nah, you know, Miss Wanda ain't coming because she's been sanctioned. So Kimmy was like, I did not say she was sanctioned. And I'm like, who cares? Tomato, tomato, sanctioned or your mama can't come around no more. Honey, just say it to Tisha like that because that's the kind of language she understand anyway. Tisha, if you're listening to this, your mama can't come around no more. Child, with the semantics, just move on from it. So now Tisha and um, Kimmy are having an argument. So Tisha was like, well, I don't like the way that you um, spoke to my mom when she first got there. Oh my gosh, are we going through this again? You were being rude. And Marcel was like, well, you know, you were actually kind of being rude the way you said to her, you know, did Tisha and Marceau invite you? That was rude. So Kimmy was like, well, I mean, if you want to take it as rude other than taking it as facts, then I guess it was rude. So maurice who is kimmy's husband he said well if you said it like you're saying it right now then it's rude what you mean wasn't you sitting right next to her honey all y'all crazy i don't know if it's the halloween costumes or what's going on child so they start arguing back and forth with each other and so kimmy said it's just proper etiquette to let a person know that you will be bringing someone with you and i mean it is i mean tisha how were you raised but i mean we see how you were raised so i'm just saying but girl if you're going to be inviting someone that was not invited the proper thing to do is to send them a text and say hey i want to bring my mom is that okay 
you know they already have a little bit of a problem so just extend the courtesy and then see how things play out so tisha was like well do i need to send a text if i want to bring my kids along is that okay kimmy and her little bird legs honey and her little mesh um midsection she had had enough her attitude had totally went from nice nasty to just nasty kimmy was like sometimes yes and sometimes no i mean because you kind of got to break it down in layman's terms for tisha to understand it so marceau was like well you were wrong in the greeting they continue to argue and kimmy's basically saying i'm not apologizing for the way i felt or what i said miss wanda should not have been there and she was like you not y'all not gonna do and say what y'all want to say at my son's celebration that's what y'all not gonna do so tisha got mad and honey her and her cat woman suit departed honey we just saw her in the wind just like we saw martell a little earlier child these people are dropping like flies so tisha storms off and then maurice is going after her like no don't leave don't leave don't leave but tisha is over it y'all know when she don't get her way she starts throwing a tantrum so now we see mel j blige in the studio honey mel this is very love and hip-hop of you if i do say so myself so she got her blonde wig on honey and she's going down when he ain't around okay so she's standing in the studio and she's singing this song and apparently the song is about martell child everybody that get on a reality show all of a sudden they have a love for music i never seen nothing like it child but i mean go on sing us a song honey go ahead kim zosiak do your thing so the brother shows up and they go and have a seat so the brother basically acts like what the hell were you at this party and mel was like well you know i skipped it because i just felt like i need to take a breather no you knew that y'all were gonna have it's some drama always surrounding you and martell so if y'all were in the same space it was gonna be some drama y'all have this stigma attached to you now because you're going through this divorce y'all have made everything so public so now every time you step on the scene it's a mess so you just didn't want to be a part of it just say that but i mean you should have at least sent him a text letting him know you know hey i'm not coming i'm not going so if you don't want to go that would be fine too if you still want to go then go ahead so then Mel was like, well, I hope you had a good time at least. He was like, well, um, yeah, I ended up telling Martell about the comment that the kids made about me wanting to be them dad, be their dad. And then he went off uh, as he should. Who you think finna let you get in their face and tell you that their kids want you choose you over them? Like, even though I don't like Martell, honey, no, ain't nobody gonna just let you say that. And so Mel was like, what? Oh my gosh, see, this is exactly why I didn't wanna go. And so then the brother was just like, yeah, you know, I was just trying to tell him what the kid said. No, you were mad because he outed you to his kids and you didn't get a chance to have a conversation with him. This was a whole vindictive thing. You had this in your mind. As soon as you stepped on the scene, you and Mel are definitely related. Y'all both move the same way. Like, come on, child. You know you was not coming to tell him just so you could let him know how the kids felt. Because he knows how his kids feel. Child, they're his kids. Anyway, y'all let me know down in the comments below if you agree with the fact that Mel's brother went to Martell the way he did. So Mel was like, well, it should have had him wondering, what makes the kids not want to go with me? That's not going to make nobody wonder why the kids don't want to go with me. That's going to make them wonder what kind of manipulation tactics are y'all doing over there? Why are y'all trying to turn these kids against me? Girl, you are in the middle of a divorce. Everything you do can and will be used against you. So when you do stuff like that, now Martell can say, they're trying to turn my kids against me. And this is what he said. Like, girl, you got to be brighter than that, honey. Instead of sitting at home, putting them blonde wigs on and playing in hair, you should be figuring out how to not be so petty. Y'all need to stop this tit for tat because child y'all putting the kids in the middle of it and it's ridiculous so as mel's talking to her brother she was saying that she experienced emotional abuse and she didn't realize she was at the hands of a narcissist when she was actually in it you know like all the crazy things that he was saying and i child look i done been through that where they try to act like you didn't see what you actually saw you didn't know i didn't text that the text doesn't say this i wasn't over here with her you're crazy no you weren't you weren't supposed to see like the gaslighting is at an all-time high when you are with a narcissist and you don't see it because you're sitting in it so now that she's on the outside looking in she can better process it and i understand that part so i related to you on that now we go on over to miss wanda's kitchen honey did y'all see that food miss wanda was putting on that plate honey that's some good old southern food child greens them that thick cake consistent cornbread honey got the consistency of a good cake 
Oh my goodness. So she feeding the kids, honey. The kids even waiting on them. They're like, Ma Mama, when is the food ready? I'm like, I know that's right, child. Miss Wanda, is the food ready? Okay. Mark Marceau comes in, of course. Um, you know, he gotta say something. He can't just come in and be quiet. He gotta come in and be Marceau. So Tisha is apparently off doing something for school. Hopefully she's off getting that speech together. But okay. So Miss Wanda went into where he was and he was like you know i kind of wanted to talk to you you'll take a seat so miss wanda said well bring it on i'm like oh my goodness Th these two finna get started so he starts talking to her about her coming to the celebration and miss wanda said she knew she wasn't gonna see mail again so she just wanted to speak to her honey she wants to speak her speech but miss wanda you want it to be messy actually because Yes, you could have said something to Mel, but at the same time, that was not the appropriate time, whether you were going to see, see her again or not. Like right then was not the appropriate time. Y'all were there for Jalen. So you should have waited. So she was like, well, God put something on your heart. Marceau said, oh, no, 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 honey. God didn't do that. God was telling you to stop. And I'm like, Miss Wanda, not when God put something on your heart. Girl, people love saying that. Well, God put it on my heart to tell you god didn't put it on your heart to be messy out there in the middle of that parking lot you and martel acting a fool so then she said well kimmy didn't even see the whole thing and i wasn't about to hold back martel called me a b and um she said martel and his tight pants jumped in my face i'm like oh not his tight pants child okay so um she was like martel called me the b word so i went off at that table and kimmy didn't see the whole thing i agree with that kimmy did not see the entire thing but all kimmy could see is that y'all had upset her celebration for her son so whether you were in the wrong or martel was in the wrong quite frankly that was not the time and had you not even gotten up then martel wouldn't have gotten up and the mess would have never been started so i think that's what everybody's trying to say but you know she's just like her daughter so she doesn't process things the same way as everybody else miss wanda you're messy marcel was like well i was just trying to protect you from being disrespected and she was like i got me I'm like, oh my gosh. She was like, well, I'm not worried about them. He said, well, you don't have to worry about them anymore because you've been sanctioned. Miss Wanda said, what is the sank? What is the sank? The sanction? What is that? I said, oh my God. Child, oh my goodness. Marcel, Marcel, Marcel said, it's like a ban. You're banned, honey. Just break it down to it. You can't come around no more. That's what you should have told him. And then she said, because of Martel. He said, no, because of your behavior. Like, I don't understand what she don't see. You were acting up at this thing. Like, what are you? She was like, well, me and Kimmy the same age. I'm like, oh, the shade of it all, honey. Not they the same age. Did y'all hear when she said that? I said, now, you know, Kimmy is of a particular age, but I don't think her and Miss Wanda went to high school together. Now, let's not get crazy. So, Marceau Mar Mar said, you're actually a good person. You actually have a good heart. Like 90% of you, if I had a glass of water, 90% would be water and 10% would be pee. Boy, if you don't shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with all of them. So, Miss Wanda had had enough, honey. She was like, I'm done with you. She was like, that's, you're not going to do me like you do Tisha. And he was like, well, do you think I, you know, talk disrespectfully to Tisha? And he, she was like, well, that's why I don't like you. That's why I don't like your ass. And so, Marceau sitting right there. Because really, Marceau loved Miss Wanda. He liked his mother-in-law. It's just, he likes to just give her a hard time. Because he knows that he can get under her skin the same way with Tisha. They are the exact same person, just decades apart, honey. You definitely, baby, you definitely had her. That you cannot deny Tisha if you tried. So she gets up and walks away from Marceau because she had enough. And Marceau going to say, walking around here looking thicker than a snicker in your leather pants. I said, not thicker than a snicker, honey. Oh, my gosh. Miss Wanda said, get out of my life. <laughs> Charlotte's scene is a mess. Now we see Maurice and the guys and Kimmy for whatever reason going shopping for the camping trip so she says she's coming along to make sure that maurice doesn't spend too much money girl what are y'all on a fixed income why are you so worried about money this season like i know covid going on and and everything is happening with people's finances but girl you don't need to be in this scene with all these men girl gone so she goes they go inside honey they're trying to find things for this camping trip so then Martel and Kimmy are off to the side and Martel apologizes about the stuff with Miss Wanda and Kimmy was like, you know, it's cool. No, it's not. And you wouldn't be saying it's cool if you actually knew what went down and how this man ran up on this woman since you always are on the side of right. The side of right would be for you to let him know that that was incorrect the way he behaved. 
But of course, since you didn't see it, you can't say that. So they talk about Mel and her brother. And he, she was like, yeah, I saw y'all over there talking. And he was like, yeah, he said some stuff to me that I don't care to repeat. And she was like, well, what did he say? So Martel told him exactly what he said about the kids. And, and Martel said the same thing I said. He said, you know, he probably was giving them sweets and stuff. Being a parent is more than just handing out candy. And I mean, it is. So then the brothers are on the other side, Maurice and Marceau. And they're talking about the 47 acres. Mar Marceau said he wants to be involved in building the apartment on the 47 acres. But he's skeptical because it involves Martel. And basically, he doesn't want to have any issues. So he's trying to stay far away from it. All right, so in the next scene, we see the guys, they're starting to arrive at the campsite. Martel starts talking to his friend Sadar about the divorce and the effects that it has on kids. So Sadar was basically telling him that he was actually a product of a broken home and a divorce and that to look out for signs of your kids being affected by it. Maybe they're sad, maybe they don't tell you a certain thing or you know, just to keep the lines of communication open. He's the sensible friend. We need to see more of Sadar. Y'all just keep on throwing us in the mix with these other people and y'all threw Destiny and, and Lederick or whatever his name is, who we've never seen. I mean, let's get some more of Sadar. We need some more sensibility. Child, Cause these people crazy. Then we see Mel and her Tyler Perry wig um, over with her kids at the pumpkin patch. So they're out there and um, they're waiting on their friend who's going to meet them later. And she was saying she was a little bit sad, you know, because she usually does the pumpkin patch with Martel. But now they're not doing it, of course. So back at the campsite, they're waiting for Marceau to get there. And apparently he got in a car accident. And so Maurice was being so dramatic. I was like, oh, my gosh, is he all right? And he's FaceTiming him. But at the same time, Maurice was just being so like, gosh, they showed a picture of the car and it was really, really damaged. And Marceau said his neck was a little bit stiff, but he's okay. So by the grace of God, he's fine. All right, let's move on. Mel and the kids are meeting with her friend Ayama, I think. That's the one who she was supposed to be in her play last year. So she says that Mel says that she helps her cope with her feelings about the divorce. And, you know, just basically is there to help her talk through things. So she's hoping she can help the kids, you know, talk through it as well. So when she sits down, she starts talking to the kids. And she's like, well, you know, we're friends now. And she's like, so I want to know, you know, more about y'all. So she asked the son who he wants to stay with. And the son said, well, no, first she mentioned her son. And they said, well, where's your son? And they said, she said, well, he lives with his dad. And they said, why aren't you there? And she said, well, because we had a divorce. You know, we got a divorce. So he lives with him and I live here. So then she starts to ask them who they would want to live with. Of course, the son said male because, you know, baby boys love their mama. Malaya, I think her name is, um, she said she wants to stay with um, her daddy, but she called him ice cream boy, honey, boss baby child. She called him ice cream boy. Mariah says she wants to stay with her mom. So then she said, the boss baby said the reason why she want to stay with Martel is because he gives her ice cream with cookies on top. Now, do y'all see how easily they can be swayed, honey? Ice cream with cookies on top make you want to stay with your daddy, honey. Child, goodbye. And so then they were talking about, well, you know, you have to learn how to deal with your feelings. And so the son says, well, I always see mommy crying and sad. And when she goes to get her clothes, you know, dad is acting like a crazy person. And I don't like to see mommy upset. And I'm like, oh my gosh. See this scene right here. Like, I really want everybody to pay attention to this scene. Mel, you need to make sure that you are being 100% transparent with them because they are seeing these things that y'all think are hidden when they're really not. So Ayama said, well, you know, you can just give her a hug when she's feeling sad. And so Mel was like, well, you know, he does do that. And so I just want you to know, Martel, that you are teaching your son exactly who not to be and what not to do. I thought this was a very beautiful scene and the kids were being so sweet and forthcoming with their feelings. And of course, Mel said she felt like the oldest, uh, Mariah, was kind of keeping things bottled up. So I hope that they're having talks about that because, I mean, I don't want that to affect them in the end. The guys are back at the campsite and they start talking about Maurice wanting to stay at home, wanting Kimmy to stay at home. He said he doesn't mind because she's saving lives. And after COVID, he really realized that her passion is nursing and he was being a little bit selfish. So, you know, he changed his tune after that. Sadar said, um, you know, he starts talking to Martel and Martel called Mel his wife. And they were both like, oh, that has a nice ring to it, your wife. And he was like, yeah, you know, we're not technically divorced. 
Child, oh my goodness. So, so Dara was like, well, what do you need to change for it to work? This boy said, absolutely nothing. You don't need to change nothing. You don't want to take accountability for anything. We are on episode 14 and you still don't want to take no accountability. Okay, Martel. Then he said, well, you know, maybe for the infidelity. Child. So then he was like, I kept asking Mel to do certain things and to, you know, and she just wasn't doing it. So I was in, involved with this person for a long time. So Sador starts to say, well, I kind of understand that when you, when the one person that you have sex with won't do what you want to do sexually, I understand where he's coming from. And Maurice said he understood too. This is my thing, Sador. Now, I thought you were sensible, but don't try to make this her fault. No matter if she was sexing him 25 hours out of a day and it's only 24 in one, he still would have done what he wanted to do. Cheating is a choice. And I don't know how many times I have to say that. Nobody makes you cheat. Martell is manipulating y'all. Child, go ahead on. So then they just keep asking, you know, do you really think it's over? Martell's like, yeah, I think it's over. Too much has happened. So they're trying to get to what actually happened that makes you think it's so over. So Maurice said, what if she changed her mind? Martell was like, well, the only reason why I would stay is because basically the family unit and my kids being in the house with both of us. Please don't stay with me for the sake of no kids, honey. You know, and I mean, I know people who have done that. Waiting until the kids are 18, lived in 18 years worth of misery just to have a family unit. That's worse than separating. The kids pick up on all that. When you're unhappy, the mom's unhappy, and then y'all are all unhappy under one roof. That's not good. So I, I hope you don't think you should stay with her just because you want the kids together because that's not good. So he says that he starts regretting things and he wishes he could change them. He thinks about it all the time. Blah, 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 blah. Things men say after they cheat and lose their family. Boy, go ahead on, honey. I don't think you feel any remorse at all. All right. So Sadar said, well, there's pregnancy rumors around. And I mean, I feel like they couldn't be true because if they were, you would definitely tell me. Hmm. Or so you think. So Maurice was in mid bite, honey. About to bite in on that hot dog they done made over this open fire. And then Martel said, well, Mel put it out because I had found out that she cheated. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what this timeline is because Mel said that you told her about the baby on Mother's Day. You're saying that you found out that Mel cheated years ago, okay, when you saw something in her phone. And Mel said it was when y'all were separated years ago. But now you're saying that you found out she was cheating and then you told her about the girl being pregnant to hurt her so somebody lying i don't know if y'all if the if the creator and writers of this is not they didn't give y'all the script this week or what but that's not making any sense to me now y'all comment down below and tell me am i the only one because that's not making any sense so martel was like well i found out she cheated then i told her that the other person was pregnant aka that heifer okay because when you interfere with somebody's marital bliss, honey, you a helper. And that's all I got for you. And as Maurice was about to bite into that hot dog and that man said, so yeah, she is pregnant. His mouth and my mouth were wide open. Because it's one thing to speculate and hear it on the blogs and you just think, well, these people just trying to, this is clickbait. These people just trying to get us to click on this so they can get a little coins, honey. But for him to actually admit on this show that this woman is pregnant, my mouth was wide open and he was like yeah she's pregnant then Sadar gonna say congrats congrats child now the baby didn't ask to be here don't y'all get me wrong in these comments honey because i know y'all might go off on me for what i'm about to say the baby did not ask to be here it is not the child's fault but ain't no congrats in order when you go have a child outside of your marriage, honey. That's not a congratulations. That is, what were you thinking? Why would you do your wife like that? Why would you destroy your family? Like, I hate when men don't hold each other accountable. Make sure, men, if any man is listening to this review, make sure your tribe is strong enough to stand 10 toes down and tell you when you are wrong. Because the fact that he said, congrats, honey, I was done. And that concludes this review of love and marriage huntsville child y'all sound off down in the comments i love to get down there and talk to y'all about this you know were y'all shocked when he actually admit admitted that the girl was pregnant so now i'm thinking that the mistress and him actually are getting married because that's what i've been hearing in the streets so i mean is that true too 
Child, this was just too much for me, honey. Mary J. Blige or Mel J. Blige and he admitting that he about to have a baby, honey. This is just too much. We'll see what happens next episode, child, because it's getting good, honey. We'll see if Marceau shows up, if he can get there after the wreck and honey. Oh, my goodness. All right, y'all. Well, I thank you so much for listening to this review. I hope that you will share this. Come back for more. I love speaking to you guys and I love to speak my speech and y'all listen to my foolishness. As always, stay safe. Stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.